What's good? I'm a Ruthless Addicts. It is your girl, Tika Deshaunty. Yes, I am here to bring you the season finale, episode 19, final review. Okay? The title of this review, or the title of this episode is The Rock Who. So, we're going to go ahead and get this thing started. All right, so of course we saw in the previous episode that the highest has discovered the missing slash dead body of Lilo. Wow, y'all. And when I tell y'all this dude had the craziest reaction ever, he had the craziest reaction ever. So he sees, um, so Clark is there as already, you know, from the previous episode. Clark is there and the highest tells Clark to... You know, he asked him, is this uh, Lilo? You know, so basically he's trying to get confirmation on some form of identifying uh, Lilo's body. Now, the highest knows, he knows that this is Lilo's body. However, he just wants confirmation. So he has um, Clark to look at the body and Clark is saying, no, I don't know if that's him. I don't know if that's him. So he... Clark is the has pissed the highest off to the point where the highest punches him and he basically falls to the ground. So then, as of course, we have Joan that was there also, who is literally, she's literally, she has vomited at least twice at this point um, from the smell and the sight of the body in the trunk. So he grabs Joan by, you know, he tells Joan to come over. Then she looks and then she's frantic, scared, screaming. And then he grabs her by her neck and he has her to look at the look at the body in the trunk and say, and he asks her, is this uh, Lilo? And she's like, I said, she's frantic, she's screaming, but she says, yes, that's him. I recognize him from the ring. And so the highest says, well, who is it that told you that Lilo left? And she says, um, it was Oliver. After some hesitation, she says, it was Oliver. She says, so the highest says, so Oliver basically is the one that killed Lilo. So where is Lilo? He asks Joan, where is Lilo? And, Le and Joan is saying, you know, well, I don't know your highest. I don't know where he is. So then he asks Clark. He says, Clark, where is, um, where is Lilo? And finally, as Lilo, uh, Clark is still on his knees, he says um, that Daikon sent them to the punishment trailer. Um, so then the highest sends uh, Clark to go and get Oliver. Now, with that being said, first Clark runs away without his gun, and the highest come uh, yells at him, "Get your take your gun with you." And at this point. The highest even said what I was thinking. What type of soldier are you, Clark? Um, <laughs> yeah, Clark runs off, tries to run off without his gun, but he turns back around, gets his gun, and makes his way over to the punishment trailer. Now, um, at this point, the highest tells Joan, he says, Joan, um, I need you to go get Elder Mother and just so happened, Manny is walking up and he looks like, dang, like what is going on here? Um, so then he says to uh, Manny, go and get, where, no, he asked him, where is Daikon? And he says, Daikon, Manny says, Daikon is gone. And he says, well, the highest says, well, go get Andrew. So at this point, um, Manny is tasked with going to find Andrew. Now, when we see Joan, no, she didn't go to get Elder Mother Marvin yet. But she goes to the finance trailer and she basically goes there to collect whatever books, financial books that she has. Um, not sure why she's gathering those documents, but she is gathering those, the books and some, some documents. Um, and we're going to see in a minute who she takes those documents to. So then we get to Clark has made his way over to the trailer where Oliver is. Um, you know, Oliver has a gun and Clark is standing outside <laughs> of, uh, Oliver's trailer or the punishment trailer telling him to come outside. Now, listen, Oliver ain't no punk. He's not coming out of that trunk, out of that trailer. And he also, I thought that the trailer's locked from the in outside in. However, I guess that's not the case where it is where, uh, Clark is telling, you know, um, Oliver to come out, but 
Oliver talks to Clark and says, so you, you know, basically he, oh, well, actually Clark says to Oliver, um, man, if I have to come in there, I'm bringing the soldiers. And, you know, Oliver talks him down like, so you need soldiers to come in here after me? You can't do it yourself? You want the highest, you know, to know that you couldn't handle it by yourself? So then um, the girls are listening in, trying to see what is going on. But at this point, we already know what's about to go down. So Clark decides to make his way into the trailer with Oliver. Now, that's it. Oliver has his gun pointed at Clark. Clark sees that he has the gun pointed at him, so he points his gun at Oliver. Um, in the meantime, the gun, um, you know, basically it's about to be a one-on-one -on -one battle. So Oliver hits Clark. Clark hits Oliver back, and it's a little bit of a tussle, but then uh, Clark, Oliver gets the best of Clark, and he basically ends up choking him out and literally choking him to death. Not only did he choke him to death, but he snapped that neck. That's something about um, how they kill people over here. Um, they, Andrew, that, uh, William, Andrew killed William like this, but Oliver, he ended up snapping Clark's neck, and that was it. Clark Clark was out. Clark was out for the count. Um, pretty much looked like he was pretty much dead. Y'all, this episode, as of course, is graphic. So at this point, you are already invested. So you might as well just keep watching. <laughs> but um, so then we get to the point where Andrew and Ruth are having their conversation. Of course, um, Ruth is just trying to. Um, make sure that Andrew goes and get the salt. She says that the reason she finally tells him, because he's like, what's up with you and this salt? So he, she finally tells him, well, the reason I need the salt is because we need to replace it, uh, replace the cyanide. And then, you know, because they poured the cyanide out. So then um, Andrew finally says, okay, I'll try to have, I'll try to see if Elder Mother well, let me go out and uh, I'll just tell her I'm going to the grocery store. And she was like, well, what? You know, why would you do that? She said, that's just going to stall and, you know, buy us some time as to, you know, in regards to everything that's going on. So then Oliver makes his way over to the ladies in the other punishment trailer, the ladies being Lacey and Paula. And he gets those ladies out and basically... He lets them know, hey, let's go, let's ride, you know, let's roll. And at this point, they're following behind Oliver's lead, of course. And then we get to the trailer, the laundry trailer, where um, where Zane and Melinda are having a conversation. Um, Melinda is saying how much she wants to leave. And, uh, of course, Zane is basically playing the game because at this point, nobody knows who you can trust on the Rock of Dushy compound. So Zane is saying, well, you know, I love it here. And like I said, just playing the game because you don't know who you can trust. Um, but Melinda says, well, I'm going to go to the, I'm going to go, you know, to the bathroom. And um, Zane basically warns her. She says that there is, um, a, there are plenty of guards around the perimeter. So basically, you're not just going to be able to walk away with no problem. You know, you, you're, you're going to get caught. Um, so she lets her know that there is a guard that basically by the name of Manny that will let you out. <laughs> he may let you out. There's no guarantees, but he may let you out. Um, if you do him a favor, um, and then she proceeds to say whether you want to or not. And we already know, we know what happened to Zane in the previous episode. I won't rehash that. Um, but you know, so Zane tells, um, Melinda, Basically, she gives Melinda a knife and just lets her know, look, be careful um, because it's not safe out there at all. So then uh, as Melinda is walking out of the trailer, out of the laundry trailer, um, our girl Joan walks in. And of course, she has this fretted look on her face because she knows what is coming. She knows what's about to go down. Um, and then Melinda says to her, or then she composes herself. But Melinda says to her, oh, I'm getting ready to go to the bathroom. In actuality, Joan could care less about her going to the bathroom or anywhere else. Because at this point, they're all about to die anyway. 
you know, the highest is pretty much prepared to take everybody out. So um, Joan, after Melinda walks out of the trailer, um, Joan lets uh, Zane know, look, I'm about to meet my maker. I'm, I'm pretty much about to cross over. So I'm going to need you to get these books, get this stuff to my people. Uh, there's a letter in there for my family and the rest of this. I need you to, I need you to make sure you mail that letter off. But this, this stuff right here, I need you to get it to the police. So y'all, we've been not trusting Joan for the longest, but it seems like Joan has her, had her own motives. I don't know if Joan is working with some government agencies such as FBI, CIA, um, even the, the regular police, I'm not sure, but at the end of the day, she, for some reason, trusts Zane, and she says that she knows that Zane will be able to get those documents out, um, to her family as well as to the police. But at this point, Joan has a look of, she has given up, there's nothing else she can do. Maybe she was that FBI agent that they say got, you know, lost in the Rock and Bush compound. That's to be determined, y'all. But that that right there was extremely crazy. All right, so here come time to laugh, y'all. I'm going to give y'all a, uh, a little bit to laugh. Y'all check out the new white outfit, the new gown that Elder Mother Mara was sleeping in or had on when Andrew walked into her door. Somebody said that Marva had some lingerie. <laughs> yeah, that was her new, her luxury, her lingerie, her lingerie. Her new lingerie line. Anyway, so Andrew walks up to Elder Mother Marvel's trailer. And, you know, she he's basically asking her, saying, I need to go to the store. Um, do you need me to bring anything back? So on and so forth. And so she says, yes, I can use a few things. And so Andrew walks inside her trailer and, and says, um, what few things are you talking about? And she said, basically, um, you can lay with you can lay with me. And he's like, Elder Mother, like he's shocked that she would even make a proposal like that. And he says to her, um, you know, I wouldn't, you know, I couldn't do anything like that, Elder Mother. You know, and she says she proceeds to attempt to blackmail him saying, well, I'm going to tell the highest that you've been lying and this, this and that. And, you know, <laughs> she, she, you know, she tried it. She tried it. She tried so hard. You know to get with Andrew, but Andrew wasn't with it. Um, so then thankfully, she um, there is a knock at the door that saves Andrew from getting he basically, it basically saves Andrew from this conversation that he is having with Elder Mother Marvel. And it is Joan that is at the door, and y'all, she she gave out this crazy scream, um, when um. Joan was knocking on the door. Marva gave out this crazy scream till it's like, why is she even yelling like that? But basically, um, Joan had stopped Elder Mother Marva from getting her little groove back, y'all. So anyway, <laughs> um, Elder Mother, she tells her the highest wants to see you, Elder Mother Marva, and he wants to see you also, Andrew. So Andrew, thankfully, gratifyingly walks out of her, runs out of her trailer to make his way over to where the highest is. So then we see um, Tally, y'all. Tally is in the woods. And just like the highest said, use baby girl um, to get her mama to come, you know, come back with us. And, you know, of course, Tally is over in the woods. She's crying because she sees her baby girl, but she's not budging. She's like, there's no way, you know, in her mind, she's saying, I can't, if I can get away, then maybe um, there's a chance that I can get someone to come and get my baby girl. Now, um, in the midst of all of this, y'all, out of all people, in the midst of Daikon in the woods and why he answers his phone in the woods with everything going on, I don't know. But with that being said, he answers the phone and y'all guess who's on the other line? It is your girl, Lynn, trying to figure out how she's going to get her way to the Rock Dusha compound. She says that she wants to be there. And he says, okay, well, let me get back with you. Um, and, you know, let me get back with you. And I'm like, girl, you seriously calling? So, like I told y'all before, Lynn has some other intentions, but... There's a whole lot going on on the Rock and compound. I actually thought that the way that this episode was going to end was that 
it will be showing Lynn at the front gate, but obviously that ain't the case this time. <laughs> maybe, maybe something else. Maybe, but no, nah, not, not that's not the case at this time, y'all. So anyway, Andrew makes his way over to the highest, and he's talking to the highest. The highest lets him know, look, open the trunk. Uh, Andrew sees the body. He already knew that the body was in there because hell, he helped put the body in there. But now the, the, the highest has discovered the body and Andrew is like, well, sir, let me help you. Let me help you get out of this that we can, I can fix this. You know, Andrew was like super confident that he can fix this. So in the meantime, the highest is like, you know, he said, Andrew was saying, let me get this car out of here. I can go put it in the bottom of the ocean. Like I did, um, the cop's car. And the highest is so convinced that the government is on their way to take the the people on the Rockadouche compound out, especially him. He's not really concerned about everybody else. He's really just concerned about himself. But he is ready, you know, and Andrew is like, no, don't do that, sir. Don't be so, you know, quick to, um, you know, send us to the Raku. And, you know, let me try to crank the car up and get it off the compound. So Andrew is stuck there trying, trying, trying to hotwire the car. Um, of course, you know, the highest said, you don't have any keys, so how are you going to get it started? And Andrew was like, well, I can, you know, I can crank it up. Let me just, let me hotwire it. Let me do what I got to do. Let me hotwire it. So it takes him a minute. He's over there, you know, playing around with the car. So then we see our girl Zane as well as um, Ruth that are in the kitchen. Now, Ruth is acting like she don't know what's going on. Like, there's a whole bunch of chaos going on on the Rocket Ridge compound. People are running around everywhere. And honestly, people just, you know, like nobody really honestly knows what exactly is going on. They just know it's a hot mess, that there is a hot mess going on on this compound right about now. So then we see our girl, like I said, we see our girl Ruth and Zane in the cafeteria or i'm sorry in the kitchen uh trailer uh and they're discussing kind of halfway discussing what's going on and then ruth kind of brings her down a notch by you know she says elder mother and then she kind of she stops her she says you know call me you know call me ruth and so she calls her ruth and zane proceeds to let her know that joan has brought her some books um, and, she, and some stuff to get to her people. And so, you know, she asked Zane, well, where is the stuff at? And she says it's in the laundry room underneath the dryer. So that's the hottest spot <laughs> underneath the dryer. Um, I guess Zane is just telling Ruth this just in case if something happens to her, you know, one other person to know. And then I think that Zane realizes that the only other person that could probably help her might be Ruth, so to speak, because at this point, can no, no one can kind of help themselves. All right, but then we have, um, next we have the crew that has escaped from out of the punishment trailer being Joan, Lacey, I'm sorry, Lacey, Paula, and Oliver. Um, they're over there by the cooler where, of course, we know that River is in that cooler, you guys. So they're just plotting on what they're going to do next. And in a nutshell, Oliver gives the ladies a quick, um, instruction on how to get this car how to uh drive a stick shift and so you know he lets them know it's almost like a seesaw with the pedal with the um clutch and the gas and you know he explains to them what the letters on the stick shift um what they actually mean um and he breaks it down so then they hear somebody or hear some noise in the um cooler and um Lacey is like what is that and Oliver says there's is somebody in there. And then he, he lets them know, look, we we gotta we we gotta get out of here. Um they just on their own, whoever that is that's in that cooler. And of course the ladies who they they have they have a heart and they're like, No, we gotta let them out, you gotta help them. So Oliver opens up the cooler and out pops up River. Y'all, River is still alive. I just well, barely. He he looks like the walking dead right about now, cause Little buddy has lost a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of oxygen. But anyway, um, they say we can't take him with, uh, Oliver says we can't take him with us, um, but we need to get up out of here. That's basically what he said. Uh, but they do get him out of there. And, and Lacey agrees, yeah, we just need to get out. You know, just we just need to go. So River musters up some strength 
to stand up. Now, at this point, I don't know. He And then after he stands up, then he staggers off. Lips darn near black. Face pale as I don't know what. But he staggers off. We don't know which direction he's headed in. Hopefully, he's trying to make his way off the Rock Bridge compound too and not worried about trying to get money because at the end of the day, that's a dead deal, um, literally. Now, then we see Melinda as well as um, Melinda. She has tried. She has made her way over to the gate. I guess her plan was to try to cut open the gate or escape from in between one of these gates. But, uh, sis, I don't think that's going to work for you. So anyway, she's over there, and up pops Manny. Um, Manny, you know, she's flirting with Manny, you know, letting him know, hey, um, you know, um, you're cute, and just all, she, she basically, she offers a sexual favor to uh, Manny, basically so he can let her out. Um, but she she shows this little she gets in this little box that looks like a doghouse and she says i can sit in here and you just stand in front so on and so forth and let me do what i do now we know that she has that knife so he, he keeps telling her um no teeth no teeth <laughs> so y'all i told y'all was gonna be graphic in the beginning so at this point you already invested my you, you may as well keep listening so anyway she tells, you know, she says, oh, it's not teeth, it's a knife. And if you move, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to cut you. Um, but Manny is just like, he's literally stuck. Like, you know I can shoot you. So anyway, um, we fast forward. And then we see, once again, we see our girl Tally, Tavia, and Daikon still in the woods. Um, they're trying... Um, Tally, you know, of course she wants to reach out and get her baby girl, but, and Daikon is taunting her, trying to get her to come out of the woods, but Tally is just like, you know, she's fighting, she's staying strong, like, no, I can't do it, I can't do it, because, you know, I gotta get away. So then, Daikon, once again, receives another phone call. At this point, somebody is on the phone, and immediately daikon says okay i'm on my way so i don't know exactly who it was that called daikon but daikon basically stops what he's doing with the taunting of tally gets on the bike put baby girl tavia on the bike and they basically head back to the rock Edition compound so then we see tally is able to run away like we don't at this moment we don't know exactly where she's headed but we did find out that Tally was on the track team in high school, which is why she can run such far distance. So at this point, it's just a matter of what's her next stop? Where will she go after this? Will she get caught again? Or will she get hurt again? At this point, we don't know. We just know that Tally is on the run. So then we see the highest still at the car human try and, and andrew was there trying to get the car crunk um crunk up so that you know he can go and hide it for the sake of the highest and elder mother marvel walks up marvel walks up and you know the highest he always is finding somebody to blame for everything other than himself um and so he slaps elder mother marvel he said this is your fault because you sent the girl out with um lilo knowing that lilo um knowing that um lacy and oliver were having sex so elder mother mom was like i didn't know you know basically i had no idea that any of that was going on um but at the end of the day when the highest is pissed everybody is punishable up under his law so then um elder mother Marva and of course Joe, who is there with her, they both they go ahead and walk away. And then the next thing we see, you guys, of course, the highest. Now, mind you, Andrew has gotten the car started. The car is crunk, and he's in the process of getting ready to take that car off of the Rocket Douche compound. But the crew walks up, y'all, and they got two guns pointed one at Lilo, I mean, I'm sorry, one at Oliver, and one at the highest. And the crew being Lacey. Paula and Oliver. They have guns pointing at the highest and Andrew is begging and pleading with Oliver. Hey man, please don't do this. If you do this, everybody on the compound is going to be killed. Um, 
I was like, nah, nah, F that. I'm out. We, y'all ladies get in the car. So they get in the car. Finally, y'all, at least the car started and uh, Paula is behind the wheel this time, y'all. Again, she's behind the wheel, but she paid attention enough to Oliver to figure out how to drive away. Now, like I said, with some begging and pleading, you know, Andrew was like, nah, man, please don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Anyway, they get in the car and they take off. And so um, Andrew says, or the highest says to Andrew, get in the Bronco and go get him. So he sends Andrew to chase down Oliver and the ladies. Now, y'all, do y'all think that Andrew will call will call Mac and let him know what's going on? Or will he actually be brainwashed and follow the crew? Will he actually follow the crew? Hopefully, I'm hoping he will call Mac, let Mac know what's going on. They can track the people down and get them to some form of safety. Okay? So then, we're back. We're back, we're back, we're back with um, Melinda as well as Manny over there at that little box. I told y'all it looked like a little doghouse. So anyway, she pulls out, she has the knife on Manny. And if it were me, I would have just pulled the knife on him. I would have just went ahead and stabbed him. Sorry, yeah, I got a little violent tendency right now. But I would have just went ahead and stabbed him. Because all of the, all that did, all that talking about it, all it did was get him to snatch the knife from her. And guess what, y'all? Melinda has been stabbed. Now, I can't see exactly where he stabbed her. But once he's done stabbing her, she's leaning over in that little box. Now, hopefully it didn't hit a vital organ, but it could have. So your girl might be dead, y'all. Melinda might not make it to season four. Or, uh, yeah, season three. Yeah, she might not make it to season three. So, <laughs> with that being said, um, Manny has to cover up the knife. So, he digs a little little small hole, enough, just deep enough to put the knife down into the ground and to cover it up. So, then, 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 y'all, the finale of this episode was crazy. The final scene, y'all. The final, final scene. We see... The crackhead, the naked, the crazy, the highest in his freaking trailer with the sword, with cocaine on the sword. He's sniffing the cocaine. When I tell y'all, he straight went. Somebody said he went caveman style. That's literally how he is. Hair, hair hanging, butt ass naked, y'all. Excuse the language. No, don't excuse it because that man is crazy. But butt naked in his trailer, snorting cocaine off of the sword. Y'all, then Daikon walks in. Daikon, he walks in. He takes off the jacket that he says the highest love to see him in. Um, Daikon, bro, you should have left the jacket on. Maybe, maybe what's about to happen to you would not have happened if you had that jacket on. So, with that being said, once again, y'all, I told y'all the highest never takes accountability for anything that happens. He basically blamed any and everybody for what was going on on the Rock Edition compound. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, y'all, that kind of knew all of this stuff was going on. And he failed to let the highest know what was up. So, with that being said... The highest basically once finished blaming everything on Daikon, he takes his sword and he swipes it at Daikon. Now, he cuts the wrist of Daikon. I don't know if he cut a vital organ, but there's a lot of blood that's coming down from Daikon's hand. I'm going to give y'all a clip at the end so y'all can see what really, really went down and how it went down. But he literally swipes him with that sword and then... Daikon falls to his knees and the highest threatens to cut his head off, y'all. Now, my question is this, and I want y'all to drop in the comments below. Do you all think that Ruth will run in in time to save Daikon or will the highest go ahead and just take the head of Daikon? Well, 
that's it y'all mm -hmm. i just really 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 had to come on in here and give you guys this review thank you so much for um following wow. subscribing so on and so forth thank you thank you thank you for being us. a part of the ruthless fans the ruthless addicts and okay? make sure <laughs> we don't know we, we uh, probably won't have another episode until yeah, march probably us. march 19th because you know like i told y'all in the beginning oh, they yeah. only giving us um nice. a new season twice a year so we'll see but this was the season finale and that's it that's i will means. see you guys later um y'all say rules this daikon why why would they do that because you lied you're lying you're a liar i i don't know what you mean <clears throat> Daikon. You lied to me. About what? You have to ask about what? You told me that many lies. No, your eyes. Where is Lilo? I don't know, sir. You know his body is in that trunk. Your eyes, I, you know, I, and they tried to steal his car. I was going to tell you, your eyes, and then Oliver is fucking the pure. Your eyes, he left with them. What? He left with them. They have the car. They have the body. They are coming to kill us. I will stop them. Andrew will stop them. Your eyes, you are a dragon. And a dragon must be slayed. You don't love me.